Dr. Sharif Abdullah offers a unique, hopeful, and visionary perspective on the persistent challenges of our time. His perspective is shaped by his urban upbringing of poverty and violence, his Ivy League education, and his work with impacted communities in America and in 45 countries around the world. His spiritual outlook is rooted in the consciousness of dozens of religions, faith traditions, and spiritual practices. Sharif offers this unique viewpoint, helping us chart a course that explains where we've been, where we are now, and how we get to a positive future that works for all living beings. Hello, Sharif here. And today I want to talk to you about today. Uh, today is New Year's Eve. Um, we're bringing to a close uh, what has been a very difficult, uh, very changing, and a very uh, tumultuous year for many of us around the world. Um, there are many of us who are celebrating uh, the ending of this year and looking forward to the next year. And uh, I actually had a friend who was saying that she was going to stay up tonight just to make sure the, the year ended. And um, I, I understand that feeling for most people, but I want to caution us in terms of, of how we're thinking about this. What we're thinking of in terms of a tumultuous year has been a tumultuous year for Americans. For most of the people in the world, They've already been experiencing a lot of the things that we're going through right now. A lot of the things that we thought would never hit us has hit us now. Right now, many of us are experiencing conditions that we never dreamed possible for ourselves. Now, we saw these things happening in the world. We saw these things happening to other Americans and just kind of turned a blind eye, just said, you know, well, that's them. There's, and we make up a story about them. If those people are living on the streets, it's because they're drug addicts, it's because they're mentally imbalanced, it's because um, they're criminals, and they're not me. They don't act like me, so I can basically ignore them turn up the volume on my television set and keep going. I think the answer to that though is, is that that's not possible. It wasn't possible while we were doing it. And now we're coming to, to grips with what does a changed world look like? Not for those people over there, but how, what does the changed world look like for me? I had a, um, a friend of mine who is um, uh, one of the, the primary advocates for homeless people in, um, here in Portland, Oregon, Ibrahim Mubarak, uh, the founder of Dignity Village and um, a ceaseless uh, a worker for people who are, are experiencing homelessness. And he did something rather unique a few years ago. Uh, because he's been accepted and welcomed in so many of these homeless uh, encampments, he went around with a tape recorder and he started interviewing the people who were newly homeless, who had been on the streets for less than six months. And he asked them two questions. Question number one was, six months ago, before you got on the streets, what did you think about homeless people? And they all answered the same, the same way you right now would answer. They were saying, I thought homeless people were you know, insane. I thought they, were, they should be in a mental hospital. I thought that they were um, on, all of them are on drugs and um, they couldn't handle being in society, etc. Second question is, what do you think about homeless people now? And the answers got to be very um, painful, very direct, and very um, 
much aware of something that would, that they could have been aware of before, but chose not to be. Because they don't, they knew they were not mentally defective. They knew they were not drug addicts. They knew that the reason they were on the street were because of conditions in our economy that they had no choice over, that they had no power over. And so, as all of us experience changed conditions, I want all of us to remember, to recognize that those changed conditions are changing only because we're paying attention differently. People around the world have been experiencing this over and over and over again. I remember when um, the, uh, uh, on 9-11 when the, the towers fell and all of us in this country experienced this sense of shock. Now, my shock was, was the same as everybody else's. This was a horrible act that, that, that uh, took place. But my shock was tempered by the fact that people have been experiencing these kinds of terrorist activities around the world in many different societies, in many different walks of life, and when we read about it in the newspaper, it was like something that was happening on the moon. This couldn't possibly happen to us until it did. So what we have to do is pay attention. There are those who think that all of our difficulties are, are going to be confined to the number 2020 and we wake up tomorrow to a whole different world and everything's going to be uh, wonderful. And some of us even think that it's all going to go back to normal and everybody's jobs could pop, pop back mag magically and none of that's going to ha happen. We could, at the end of 2021, be yearning for the good old days of 2020. One of the things I'm going to, I'm going out on a limb to say uh, this is my, one of my predictions for 2020, 2021, and that is we can't predict what's going to happen. We're not supposed to predict what's, what's going to happen. We are supposed to be reacting to what happens. The question is, do I react to this? from my fear, from my anger, from my loathing? Or do I react to this from my love, my compassion, and my understanding that all of us are in this together? Whenever I want to find an enemy, whenever, whenever I want to find someone to be against, I need to start thinking about things really, really differently. I need to start thinking about how we all can come together and how we can master the difficulty together and how we can grow together. This reminds me of a situation uh, that happened uh, some years ago during the um, the, the earthquake in San Francisco, uh, the, the, the latest big earthquake in San Francisco. This is when the 880 Expressway, which was a double-decker expressway, pancaked down on top of itself and trapped thousands of people in hundreds of cars on the, on the expressway. And when this happened, there were people at great risk to their own lives climbing up into the, the wreckage of the expressway that's still shaking from the earthquake. And they climbed up to rescue people who were in trapped in these cars. Now, when they went up to the cars, they didn't say, are you a Democrat or a Republican? Because I'm only rescuing Republicans or Democrats. When they went up into the wreckage, they didn't say, 
are you white are you black are you hispanic they weren't saying are you rich or you are you poor what they were saying was you're a human being you're a living being and there's something inside of us something in this society that's gone to sleep for too long but there's something inside of us that says I am going to extend my, myself for you. I'm going to extend myself to the point of risking my own life for you, for, to, to, to benefit you, you whom I've never met. Now, think about how that would, that would make you feel to be rescued by someone that you don't even know if you speak the same language. That you're being rescued by someone who simply knows that this is the right thing to do. And they knew it because their hearts were moved to this. Compare this to, right now, the debacle that's going on in our Congress, where the question was, is, are you going to receive a totally inadequate amount of money for this, for this so-called COVID uh, rescue? Or are you going to receive even less of, a, of an adequate amount of money? So the vote is, which of these inadequate amounts of money do you, uh, do, are we going to pass out to people? And the, the, the answer is, why are we doing that? Why do we give to the CIA, to parts of the Defense Department, unlimited budgets? We can't even account or account for the amounts of money that they receive. Yet, for someone who is sleeping on the streets, who is hungry and has their children hungry, we're going to say, oh no, $600 is enough for you. Or, wow, I'm going to give you $2,000. As though that's going to solve the problem. We need, in 2021, a new way of thinking about each other. A new way of thinking about ourselves a new way of thinking about our society, a new way of thinking about and dealing with anyone we think of as the other, as, as holding opposing energy to us. I'm hoping that that's our, our, our goal. I'm hoping that that's the thing that we can uh, move forward on. I'm hoping a really beneficial 2021 for each one of us, the thing that benefits our heart and starts getting that heart thinking about and beating for those who are less fortunate than we are. Let me say one more thing before we, uh, we end. Um, this is a, a holiday for most of us and the way we've we've held this holiday for you know, in the past has been you, know, you go out tonight you drink a whole bunch of champagne you get drunk you say happy new year you throw stuff in the air um you wake up the next day with a hangover you watch a whole bunch of football and eat some food and then you're you're off i'm inviting you to do something different well you have to do something different because most of that stuff is not going to happen i'm inviting you to go back and, and refresh yourself on all of these short videos that I've been doing over the past few weeks to go back to look at the progression of where we are and where we've been and where we're going. To do this in such a way that you get to walk into 2021 with your eyes a little bit wider than they have been in the past. That your heart is a little bit stronger in terms of your willingness 
to step out of the confines of the boxes that you put yourself in to start looking at what our world really looks like and start looking at where we all can go as we start looking for a way forward. So the all of the links for the all of the videos should be in the um, uh, discussion and content part um, uh, directly under this video here. And you can go through, look at them, and uh, open yourself to a whole new reality. So thank you. I want you all to have a meaningful end of 2020, a meaningful beginning of 2021, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. You are invited to participate in the discussions and activities that will define a positive future for all. We are at the cusp of the expansion of our human consciousness beyond the limitations of our past. Together, we can envision a world that embraces our human potential. Together, we can create a world that can truly work for all living beings.